guys, if you are new, my name is Vanessa and today is all about freezer meals. So I am taking you from the very beginning where I am prepping the freezer meals and then over the course of a few weeks, we are going to cook them up as well. And I will share with you guys how they turn out, what we serve them with and all of that. And they are not just crock pot freezer meals. A couple of them are in the oven. I do have a sum for the crock pot and then I have one for the stove as well. So let me go ahead and take you guys down to my counter where, where we are going to start prepping all of these up and then we'll get to cooking them as well. So I've got everything laid out for me. So it's easy, it's already here. I'm not stopping to go find everything. I spent a few minutes and just pulled everything out that I am going to need. The um, freezer meal recipes that I am sort of following, there's a couple that I have changed up a little bit, but I found them from the Living Well Spending Less blog and she doubles all of her freezer meals. I don't need that many, so instead of like doubling these and getting 10, I'm just going to make five freezer meals. So I will have um, her blog listed down below. Now I like picked picked out the ones that I wanted to try. She has a ton more available. So um, instead of me trying to find all of these on her blog, I'll just list her blog and you guys can check it out, see what else she has to offer. So with any type of a freezer meal, I always like to label my bags first. So I'm going to do that and then we'll start getting into each recipe. So we are gonna start with one of the easier ones where there's not a whole lot of prep. It's mainly just your meat and the sauce or marinade that you're going to make. So just some light mixing. So this one is the easy slow cooker pot roast. Like I said, I do label my bags ahead of time. So I've got the date that I'm making it. So I know that I have about three to six ish months where I need to eat this or, you know, the freezer burn starts to set in and um, the ingredients just aren't as good and it's not as tasty. So I've got my date on there. I labeled it what it is and then the directions and especially if there is anything that you are going to be adding into it the day of cooking that's not already in your bag so this one like most freezer meals you want to thaw enough to get out of the bag I typically will the day before in the morning if I remember <laughs> but at least the night before I want to make it I will pull it out of my freezer and get it into my fridge and then the morning of I will pull it out of the fridge and just let it sit on the counter until I come back to it and start prepping it for dinner so this one is a crock pot meal you can cook it on low for eight to nine hours or high three to four. And then I know that glare is pretty bad, bad because this is a bag, but um, the day of cooking, I'm going to add some chopped carrots to this and some red potatoes. And this is pretty much a meal in one. You could add, you know, whatever you wanted on the side as well. If you wanted to do like mashed potatoes and just add the carrots into the roast or a big salad on the side, some bread, really whatever you want. So there's my recipe. I do like to use these little bag holders. You could use like a pitcher. I've seen lots of people do that. This is just super easy and convenient. Um, and I don't have to worry about, you know, messing with any of my pitchers. I know these little bag holders are strictly for when I am prepping meals. So these are always linked in my Amazon cart um, that is in the description box. And then the ingredients that I'm using for this recipe, I'm changing up just a little bit. So so this is the meat that I picked up from the store. It is a eye of round roast. So I'm going to be using that one packet of the uh, onion soup mix, a can of cream of mushroom soup, as well as, as cream of celery. And then her recipe calls for chicken broth, but I used this earlier or actually later last week and I still have a little bit left in here. So I wanna use this up. So I'm gonna be using beef broth and then I don't wanna open another bottle of like a specific red wine. I have this fine Marsala wine. So that's what I'm going to use. It's just gonna change the flavor a little bit, but it's still gonna be super yummy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these ingredients in my bowl and whisk them up. All right, I've got my bag on my holder. You guys can probably hear my laundry going in the background. It is almost done, so it is working overtime right now. And I always put my meat in first, just because that's the heaviest item and I don't want anything to like splash out or anything like that. All right, now I'm adding in the mixture that I just whisked up. Okay, and now 
I'm going to close my bag and try to, without spilling, just get as much of the air out as possible. Okay, one freezer meal down. Okay, and next up, we are going to prep some herb roasted chicken breast. I've got all the ingredients out. I didn't change a thing. So she calls for parsley, sage, rosemary, oregano, thyme, chicken broth, garlic, oil. I'm using olive oil, I think. Yeah, she calls for olive oil some minced onion, and then salt and pepper. And I'm going to be using, I think I pulled out eight total. They are obviously still frozen, but that is totally okay. And a side note, you can thaw your meat, prep your meals, and then put it back in the freezer. It's totally fine if you're doing that. I've gotten comments on that in the past. So it is totally safe to do that. And do not rinse your chicken. Another thing that I used to get comments on, please don't do that. Uh, it definitely can contaminate your cooking space or kitchen area. So I've got my chicken breast here. I'm going to get four of them in my freezer bag, which again is already dated and labeled. So this one I am baking in the oven. So I've got my instructions here. I'm going to cover it and roast it at 425 for 45 to 60 minutes. You just wanna make sure that the internal temperature of your chicken is at least 165. So let me get my bag put up, my chicken breast in there, and then we will mix together all the seasonings that are going to go on top. All right, I've got my chicken in my bag and now we are going to mix up the marinade. So I did my little bit of prepping. I did not measure the parsley. I just grabbed a bunch and chopped it up. And then her freezer meal that she makes, she only does two garlic cloves and I'm doing four. And to save on dishes, I do just rinse. When I'm freezer meal prepping, I try to utilize the same dishes for each meal. If I need to rinse them out or even scrub them just a tiny bit, I will. But yeah, I don't, I don't want a whole bunch of dirty dishes. Okay, I'm adding in half a cup of the olive oil and then one cup of chicken broth. I'm adding in one and a half tablespoons of the minced onion. You could totally use fresh as well one teaspoon of the thyme, about half a teaspoon of rosemary. So her recipe calls for only half a teaspoon of the, oh, you guys can't even see that, of the sage for doing a double batch. So I'm not going to dirty another spoon. I'm just going to, or measuring spoon, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit, I'm gonna do a little bit more over the top there. And then I'm going to do one teaspoon of the oregano. Then we're going to end with, I need to fill up my little salt container here, one teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper. And that is our marinade that we're going to pour over the chicken. So I'm just gonna give that a quick whisk and add it to my freezer bag. All right, so I close my bags all the same, try to get as much air out as possible. Um, but for this one, I'm really going to rub the chicken with the marinade and just make sure that as much as I can get on there because these are frozen, um, gets on there. And I'll do the same. When I am ready to cook this and I pull it out of the freezer, I will probably, for this recipe, just to make sure that my chicken is fully coated, I will go ahead and maybe thaw it enough in a a bowl of water and it's still in the bag don't open the bag and then once I can like mess with it I'll re rub it get it in my fridge to thaw more overnight rub it again in the morning and then get it in my dish and bake it and maybe like every 20 minutes or so I'll like baste it I'll get in there and get the juices and stuff and pour it over the chicken again just to make sure that all of this flavor is on my chicken as it is baking but all right two down okay next up we're going to finish with the rest of the chicken and get this next freezer meal or chicken freezer meal put together so this one is the easy tomato parmesan chicken and i am changing this one up just a tad so she calls for a jar of 
spaghetti sauce, like a 24 ounce for two of them. So her ingredients are to make two freezer meals. Again, I'm just making one of each. I don't need like a whole bunch of freezer meals on hand right now. So I have a 22 ounce of tomato sauce or marinara sauce right here. She also calls for a can of diced tomatoes. I am omitting the diced tomatoes just because I feel like since I'm adding more, I don't want to have just a little bit of marinara sauce left over and try to find something else to do with that. I mean, we have mozzarella sticks in the freezer. I could save it for that, but no, I'm just going to make this nice and easy and dump the whole jar in there. So I am omitting the diced tomatoes. That way it's not too tomatoey. And then we also are going to be adding some Parmesan cheese. She does call for mozzarella cheese, but that is for when it is time to bake it. So I did add that on my list here or on my instructions. We're gonna be using some Italian seasoning. And then again, she called for two cloves of garlic. My cloves are fairly small, so I'm doing four. And then I didn't measure the parsley at all. I just pulled off a bunch and chopped it up and that will be good to go. I've got my four chicken breasts here. I'm gonna add my chicken breasts to my bag. I've got my bag all labeled with the date, what it is, um, this one is also baking in the oven. So I have my instructions here. I'm going to pour it into a casserole dish and the night that I want to cook it, I'm going to top it with a mozzarella cheese then, and then I'm going to cover it and bake it at 425, 435 to 45 minutes. Again, just making sure that my chicken reaches the temperature internally of 165 degrees. All right. I've got my a chicken in my bag here. I've got my bowl again. I'm adding in the entire jar of spaghetti sauce, about one cup of the Parmesan cheese, a tablespoon of the Italian seasoning, and then the fresh parsley that I chopped, as well as the four cloves of garlic. So a spoon would probably work good too, but I've already got this whisk out, so the whisk works perfectly fine. I'm just going to mix all of this together. Oh man, that smells really good. <laughs> These two chicken sauces smell good. It's gonna be hard waiting for when I have them on my meal plan to actually eat them. Okay, and then I'm just adding in my sauce to the bag on top of the chicken. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with this chicken that I did with the last, although this one is more saucy, so I don't have to rub it as much. I just wanna make sure that my chicken is completely coated with the sauce that I added in here. So it's, you know, flavoring it really good while it is in the freezer and again when i pull it out to start thawing so that is a freezer meal number three all right we are moving on to the sloppy joe recipe so typically i mean we love sloppy joes in this house this is a different recipe for me because of some of the ingredients that it calls for so i'm only going to make one batch but if you know that your family likes something, I would go ahead and you know make a two to four <laughs> batches for your freezer since you're already cooking one. It doesn't take a whole lot to cook a little bit more. So I've got my one package of ground beef. Some people don't cook their ground beef when they're prepping freezer meals, but I don't see that that often. Ground beef is definitely something that I prefer to cook ahead of time. So I am going to cook this up. And if you are new, Whenever I'm cooking ground meat, outside of ground sausage, I feel like ground sausage has a lot of flavor already, but ground turkey, ground pork, um, ground beef, I always add onion powder and garlic powder, and that is why I buy them in the big jugs because I use them so often. So I've got my garlic powder on there. Now I am adding my onion powder, and I don't measure. I just put enough to cover the top that that might look that actually looks like a lot on camera but it's not it's just a small little layer on top of my ground beef and now this is going to take me a little bit longer because i was not thinking and i should have had this ground beef sitting in a bowl of water the entire time i was making those other freezer meals but i didn't think about it until i was to the last one so it is thaw enough to get it out of the package into my skillet but it is going to take me a little bit longer to get this cooked and browned up so just a side note make sure you thaw your ground beef <laughs> before making freezer meals because it will make the process a lot faster all right my ground beef is done turn the heat off i'm going to let this cool before i get it in the bag all right, while my hamburger cools, I'm gonna get everything else ready for my freezer meal. And the dogs are running around in the background, so you guys probably hear that. It's a madhouse in here right now. 
So this is a new to me sloppy joe recipe um, and I could not for the life of me find chicken gumbo soup. I looked everywhere, Target, H-E-B, Walmart, nothing. The only place I could find it was Amazon, but you have to buy a case of 12 and it was like $34 and I said, no ma'am, <laughs> I am not going to do that. So um, I omitted that and I'm just gonna use a bell pepper. That's what I'm doing. I mean, sloppy joes are pretty forgiving as long as the flavor is good, it really doesn't matter what is in them. So I've got my ground beef cooked up. I'm going to chop up a bell pepper. This is the other, it, so it was, the gumbo soup and tomato rice soup. Have you guys ever had sloppy joes with those? I don't know. Sounds kind of weird, but I don't like to knock things until I try them. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a try. So I did find the tomato rice soup. So I'm going to be adding that. I'm going to chop up an onion and then this is the rest of the seasoning. So apple cider vinegar, some brown sugar, a chili powder, and good old ketchup. So let me go ahead and get these chopped up and then we are going to whisk together these items um, to add as like a saucy a mixture to our sloppy joes. Oh, and I almost forgot because I am, you guys hear that, distracted by dogs. But um, this one you can just heat up on the stove top. You could also throw it in the crock pot on low, you know, until it's nice and melty and how you like it. Um, but I just wrote heat on stove for 30 to 45 minutes. Okay, everything is ready to add to my freezer bag. I've got the onion, bell pepper, all the other random ingredients mixed together, and my ground beef. Okay, everything is in my bag. Closing it up, pushing out as much air as possible. And then I really wanna mix these ingredients up, so I'm just gonna do it in the bag. You could do this in the bowl also. I'm just so used to dumping everything in the bag that I'm just gonna mix it all together the best that I can. Definitely curious to try this one out and see what we think of this Sloppy Joe recipe. All right, four down. Let's get the last one prepped. All right, last but not least is the freezer pork tenderloin recipe changing this one out just a little bit. So these are the ingredients that I'm going to be using. I have this boneless pork shoulder butt roast that has been in my uh, freezer for just a little while. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna use that. I've got some garlic here, an onion, pepper. Um, these come in a pack of two. So that's why I picked two recipes that use them. So I could just use this box up. So I'm gonna use the last packet out of there some chicken broth, soy sauce, a W sauce, as I like to call it. Did I say pepper? Pepper. And then the recipe does call for red wine, but I buy Marsala and I just like, I don't make chicken Marsala a whole lot or um, recipes that call for this. So whenever I find a recipe that calls for red wine, I just use the Marsala and it tastes very, very good. So that is what I am using. I've got my bag here. I'm gonna get my pork in here and then mix the rest of my ingredients up and pour those in. And this is a crock pot meal. You will just cook it on low for four to five hours. All right, I've got my pork in my bag and this bowl is rinsed out. The spaghetti sauce just stained it. It'll come out when I actually wash it. <laughs> so the bowl is clean enough now we're going to add the rest of our ingredients into here so i've got my packet of onion soup mix one cup of chicken broth one cup of wine i'm going to add two tablespoons of soy sauce and about half a tablespoon of w sauce and then the pepper is to taste so i'm just going to put in a good pinch Okay, adding in the garlic that I just chopped up as well as the onion. I'm just going to whisk all of this together and pour it on top of my pork. All right, I am done. So I've got my five freezer meals. I'm going to stick them in the freezer, but I'm also going to be cooking these over the next several weeks. So I'm gonna show you guys how they all turn out and what we think. All right, so time to make a freezer meal. And this one is the parm chicken. So I took it out, actually I took it out two days ago. <laughs> it's been sitting in my fridge and we were gonna have it last night, but something else came up. So I did not make this, but all I'm going to do is pour it into my casserole dish. I do have my oven preheating to 425 and then I'm going to stick it in there for 45 minutes. 
uh, because that is when I want dinner to be ready. I am going to top it with some mozzarella cheese and then I will put a little foil covering on it. So let me go ahead and get the dinner set up and then we will get it baked and I'll show you what we are serving it with. Okay, dinner is served. This definitely has all the flavors of Parmesan chicken or chicken parm in it. I absolutely love it. Definitely will keep this in my arsenal if I want to ever prep a few freezer meals. I did, however, uh, make a note that I had to cook it for 10 more minutes to get my chicken to 165 degrees internally. That's when it is safe to eat. So I did have to cook mine at 10 more minutes. So it was a total of 55 minutes, not 45 but I am just serving it over some pasta. We have a bunch of like random <laughs> bags of pasta in our pantry. So I just grabbed one and put this over the top. So I did pull out the chicken and cut it up into little bite-sized pieces. Um, that's definitely gonna be easier for the kids as well. So I'm gonna do that with another couple chicken breasts here and that way we can easily eat it with our pasta and then this is one of my go-to super easy sides it's just green beans you can use canned green beans a fresh frozen whatever kind you have some butter garlic salt and pepper and then any kind of almond i love to use these slivered almonds sometimes i can't find them so i used uh, i use little like chopped almonds but any kind of almonds and it is a super super yummy and easy like i said all right, so freezer meal number one definitely gets a, a thumbs up from me. Okay, so I have the roast in the crock pot. That's what we are going to have for dinner tonight. I do have it on low for eight hours, and when there's two hours left, I'm going to add in some potatoes and carrots. Okay, there's only about two hours left on the timer, and I went ahead and added in some potatoes and carrots. This is totally optional if you wanna make mashed potatoes, have a salad, whatever with your roast, but I am adding in the potatoes and the carrots and they are going to continue cooking with my roast for the last two hours. All right, dinner is done. It smells so good. I have a plate made up here. I did go ahead and just throw together a bag of salad. It, like, it was a kit, came with everything because I know some of the kids are going to opt out of the carrots. <laughs> so um, most of the time we have some kind of veggie with our dinner. So I just went ahead and threw this together. I might put a little bit on my plate, but I've got some of the pot roast here, the carrots and potatoes. And like I said, it smells good. It tastes good. Also have some sourdough bread here with some butter, but this is how our pot roast freezer meal turned out. All right, for dinner tonight, the freezer meal that I cooked is the sloppy joe. I didn't like, it, it's done, we're about to eat, but I figured the end result is just fine because this one, you just let thaw overnight, throw it in a saucepan, and I just cook this on medium low because the ground beef is already cooked. You just wanna get it nice and warm and bubbly, and I let it cook the entire time I was getting everything else ready. So I have quite the spread tonight just because everybody likes different things. So here's our sloppy joes. I did take a little bite so I could let you know what I thought since this is a new recipe that I am trying and it's good. I'm really curious if I could have found that chicken gumbo, I'm curious what that would have tasted like because I feel like this isn't that different with the rice and the tomato sauce in it versus what or how I normally make sloppy joes. So there's that, still good. I would make this again, um, no doubt. So I've got my buns here that I just toasted lightly in the oven and then some french fries and we had a small bag of onion rings and there's a couple of us that like onion rings. So I've got that over here. We've got all our condiments. Uh, one of my kids likes to mix all three of these together. Very weird, I have not tried it so I can't knock it but um, the rest of us just have a variety that we like. Chick-fil-A sauce, ketchup, and mayonnaise. Uh, a couple of my kids just mix the ketchup and the mayonnaise together. I myself love Chick-fil-A sauce. So we've got there that and then over here I had a bag salad that I didn't use for a dinner earlier in the week so this definitely needed to be eaten so I just threw that together. It's like a sriracha ranch dressing that is on it. Just a bag kit and then whenever we have sloppy joes we always have pickles. So these are the two kinds that I had in my fridge. I've got these little Petite dill pickles, and then the Klausen, which is our favorite brand. They are super yummy. 
and we like to put cheese on our sloppy joes. So I've got some Colby Jack here and then I like Munster cheese on pretty much anything. So I might be the only one <laughs> using this cheese. Everybody else will use the Colby Jack, but that is what we are having for dinner tonight. And definitely, I, I give this sloppy joe recipe a thumbs up. It's pretty good. All right, it is dinner time, and I am making the last of the freezer meals that I have. So this is the herb chicken. I actually took it out this morning. I had it out on the counter for just a little bit, put it back in the fridge, and about an hour ago, I took it out of the fridge and just had it sitting here um, so it would get thawed enough for me to pour it out. So I have it in my little casserole dish here. My oven is preheated to 425 degrees I'm going to get some foil on top and set the timer for an hour so 60 minutes at about 30 minutes I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and just kind of baste it move the chicken around make sure that all the seasonings and the liquid are over my chicken so I'm not losing out on any of this flavor but let me go ahead and bake this up and then I will show you guys what we're going to serve it with as well as what I think of the taste all right, dinner is done. So our herb chicken freezer meal actually has a lot of flavor. Uh, I knew it when I was throwing this together when we first prepped it. All the smells that were coming from all the herbs and everything that is in this recipe. Definitely a lot of flavor. Tonight is kind of just a throw together dinner though. This is salad left over from last night's dinner. We never get through an entire bowl so we need to have it two nights in a row. So we've got some salad here and then I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to add to this. You could totally just have a chicken and salad but that's definitely not enough for my children. So I went ahead and I had a couple packets of these in the pantry. So I just whipped them up. The Snore Pasta Sides, the Alfredo Broccoli. So I went ahead and made those and that is what we are serving with our herb chicken freezer meal. All right, well, we got five prepped, but only four of them cooked. You guys, for the pork tenderloin, my crock pot finally went kaput on me. It kept blinking and going off and on, off and on all day when I was trying to cook that pork tenderloin. So I was not able to finish that meal up and share it with you guys. I am sure it would have been fantastic though, super yummy. So don't knock that recipe. If you guys want to try it, I will have the website or the blog linked down in the description box where I found all these recipes. Like I already mentioned, she shares a ton more. Like she has a ton of freezer meal inspiration. If you guys like to get yourselves in the kitchen and prep yourselves for a month, a couple months, whatever. She's got a ton of recipes to pick from. So, but I was able to share four dinners with you guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing it like that. Sometimes in the past, I have just prepped the freezer meals um, in one video and then in like a what's for dinner or a separate dinner or a separate video, I will cook freezer meals. So if you guys liked it this way, I'm definitely a huge fan of freezer meals and I will be making them again at some point during this year, maybe even two or three more times. So if you wanna see them like this, where I take you through the whole process, let me know and I can definitely do that. So if you guys are new, hit that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up. If you like freezer meals, I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.